Oh, I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I am doing just fine and also doing fine with the Washington Capitals, but it'll be a minute before we talk about them because we're doing the tier list power rankings for December. We have not done this since the preseason, so there have been like, what, like almost 30 games played in some cases, and so we're going to see lots of moving and shaking from where we saw them last time, but not in the case of our first team, Ottawa, who is and will always be the worst team in the NHL. I don't really have too much to say about them. Um, they're you know, standing wise, maybe a little bit better than they should be, but I think inarguably they're still trash. They've got a bunch of injuries. There's the Bobby Ryan status thing, but um, they're still sort of just in, in hell forever. Right. Yeah. Eugene Melnick for life. Yeah. Uh, that, and, and I mean, like, don't you feel like we're dancing around the possibility of eventually having like him be forced out? Like, doesn't that feel like that's coming one day? I'm shocked that it hasn't already happened to be honest. Like the NHL is just going to be very politely saying, Hey, you got to do something here. So let's yeah. uh, let's move to a team that is on the exact same tier, not necessarily better. Uh, that's right. It's the Detroit Red Wings, who are one of the worst teams in the modern era. Like if you like think about like some like the worst teams we've seen, you know, there's some like Buffalo teams from like earlier in the 2010s. I would say Detroit is in that neighborhood. They are hot trash garbage. They have no good prospects. I don't know what they're doing out there. Poor Mike Green. But yeah, they're they're about as bad as it gets, and I don't want to talk about them too much because they're that bad. You know, we even saw Mike Green try to leave his team in in, in the game that he played against the Capitals. So, <laughs> I mean, it's that bad. Exactly. You know? How, wait, wait. Didn't Madison Bowie have like the worst game of the year with game score or something? Yeah. A few a few games ago. I like, was yeah, so disappointed when Madison Bowie got scratched for the Caps Detroit game. Like, like oh, first yeah, of all, it's appropriate. <laughs> like, like I mean, like. I'm the one that had the tweet that said maybe he'll be better than Evgeny Kuznetsov. That was in like 2013, so get off my back. <laughs> but like uh, I was wrong, obviously. But uh, yeah, he's not he's not panned out even okay-ish. That's a that's a mess. So that's uh, what happens when you spell your last name with an e y instead of an i e. In indeed. Let's get <laughs> off of the F tier and onto the E tier where Columbus. I believe in the preseason. I I was like, hey, they could be okay. They could be okay. They're not okay. Uh, they're worse than I thought they would be. Um, I put them in E tier rather than F tier because there is some hope. Like um, they have, so like they have a good D pairing with like Jones and Ransky. Ransky's hurt right now. He could be hurt long term. We have no idea. Um, so I think they're in, in in deep trouble. Maybe they'll be like active around the deadline for like looking for assets, but there's just not a whole lot that they can do in the shorter medium terms here. Yeah, and disappointing amount of John Tortorella meltdowns this year. You so think, I would even put him in the F column just for that. You think with like the reckoning of coaches that like Don, John Tortorella is just like waking up every morning like, is today the day? You, you know, I think he's so out there of who he actually is. You're not going to find out anything worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's there's nothing surprising about torts. Right, right. Okay, let's move, let's let's uh, move on to the New Jersey Devils who recently fired their coach. I mean. They started their season about as bad as it can get. Uh, and I, they, I thought they, you know, they have Capocaco. I'm sorry, they have Jack Hughes. We'll talk about Capocaco in a bit. And I'll do the voice. I'm sorry. Um, I, but they're going to have to, like, uh, uh, Jack Hughes is not panned out like they thought he would. Or at least he hasn't been, like, the world beater, the game changer that, like, you know, uh, like a Connor McDavid tier player is. Uh, he had some pretty rough starts that said, you know, he is scoring somewhat. But, uh, you know. P.K. Subban's not doing that great. Um, uh, they have, you know, a temp coach in, and they're on the market for for selling Taylor Hall. It'll happen for the, the the trade deadline for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens before Christmas. They want to. I think they want to. They don't want the market to like constrict or have like lose eligible teams. I think they want an auction here. So you know, you could hear Arizona, you could hear Colorado. There's a bunch of teams in the market for Taylor Hall, uh, and uh, the the bottom of the metro is going to drop out even lower than it already is. Yeah. Well, I think I think they still have an amazing future. But yeah, right now it's it's tough times in, in, in uh, New Jersey. Uh, also tough in the metro area because uh, New York Rangers are also hot garbage. Uh, uh, that's where Capocaco is. He had, was just miserable to start off the season. Wait, 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 who? Capocaco, who was just <laughs> hot trash to start the season. But he actually has started a score that said like Panarin's had some big nights, but it's pretty much just like the Henrik Lundqvist show like it always is. Uh, I don't think that anything's going to change there anytime soon. I think I, I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing. There doesn't seem to be any vision for the future, um, you know, a year after they did the announcement that they're doing the rebuild. So uh, dark times in there. And I think that gets us out of the, the E tier, unless you want to uh, call out something about how uh, sucky the Rangers are. 
the second no, of no. several. Lundquist, Lundquist against the Caps. Wow, he was good. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, and it, like surprisingly it, good to the point that it like bought. You know how like the Washington football team is winning games right now. Yeah, they they shouldn't right. Like, it doesn't it's not make any a, sense, right? It's not a good thing for them to win games, right? Like, you're you're, we need them. You want them. Fans want them to lose so you get a good, you know, drafting spot, and that's not happening for them right now. So, um, or, or for the Rangers. So let's move on to the D tier with the Florida Panthers, who are a good team. They've got good special teams. They're driving play, but uh, the saving percentage is just not there. Sergei Bobrovsky um, is the first of two goalies in the East who is just going to destroy the free agent market, uh, like the top end of uh, the free agent market for goalies. Sorry, Brayden Holby. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, they're they're a good team just getting destroyed. Bobrovsky, you know, signed that $10 million deal or whatever it is, came down to Florida, hoped to, like, you know, get this team to the next level and he's the one holding them back yeah how good is brett Connolly though at even strength one of the best players in the nhl unsurprising though you know like like so like if you look at what is it expected goals above or goals above like expected like yeah he's he's brett Connolly. like he is as advertised it's it turned out that like the stuff that like you kept on looking at me like is he gonna cool off no i think it's a durable trait and that's awesome for him i'm really glad that you know somebody can can actually if you look at like cap forwards who have left the team recently, including like uh, Andre Berkowski as well, like they're both doing well outside, uh, also in places where it doesn't really hurt the caps too bad. So it's it's always really nice to see bottom six guys like really do well in top six roles. You know what I mean? It really means that the Capitals are really uh, developing guys, and and that's always awesome to see. Exactly. Yeah, like um, you know, there's like this big sort of reckoning about uh, uh Jacob Verana. Everyone's sort of coming around to appreciate how special he is. And if you think about it, like he'd be playing top line on 20 teams out of the 31 in yeah. this league right now, and it just happens that he's slotted behind Alex Ovechkin, and we'll never ever ever get above him. So um, it's nice that people have finally joined us on the Jacob Verana train. Absolutely. Welcome everyone. From us two years ago with Barry. <laughs> lots of lots of space on the bandwagon. Uh, that's right. You get scratched from those playoff games, right? Sorry. Yeah, and Hershey too. Yeah. All right. So scarred. I'm, here, I'm still scarred. Here's a controversial pick. Uh, also on the D tier, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, Toronto had a really rough start to the season. They fired Mike Babcock. As I always, if you listen to the "You Can't Do That" podcast, they call him Mike Bad Cop. Uh, like like good cop bad cop and it just is in my brain now I can't get it out uh, so Mike Babcock got fired um, they're still having some trouble that that said they are winning games but they need to be on a pretty torrid point space if they want to make the 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 playoffs um, like right now they're outside the picture uh, I don't think that they can do it with Freddie Anderson um, they don't have a lot of flexibility though right like they're there's they can't really jump on the goalie market I'm not sure what market inefficiencies are there to exploit for the Kyle Dubas of the world on the goalie market anyway, but it's a weird time uh, for, for Toronto. They have, you know, awesome forwards are not quite as deep as they were last year, especially after losing Nazem Kadri. They've got some weird stuff happening on defense with Cody Cece. Uh, and I think their goaltending is not up to snuff. Other than that, I think they're, you know, a cup contender. Um, they just need to, a, to get readjusted. That's a big list. By the way, though, once you started talking about my bad cop, I'm surprised that he didn't uh, show up behind you and start emotionally abusing you. <laughs> right on. What are you doing? Um, yeah, you know, I, I still feel the same way about the Leafs um, from a few years ago when they kind of took the Capitals to the brink. I mean, they've been god awful, and I think that coaching change is probably going to pay big dividends down uh, in the second half of the season. Uh, I just think they have so much talent, and I actually think Frederick Anderson, when he was playing the caps in the first round a few years ago he was probably the biggest reason why uh they took the capitals to the brink so i don't know i think they have the right ingredients there it just has to come together and it just hasn't under babcock and there's probably a lot of reasons why emotionally speaking uh of why they didn't and i'm really going to be interested to see how they uh, come together under keith but yeah i think right now to have them in the d category is is absolutely the perfect call there and like unlike you know sort of like florida is on the d1 because they're not good and don't probably aren't going to get better. Toronto's on the, on the D tier because they had a rough start and they're probably going to get better, but let's see it first. So like yeah. uh, I have my own uh, insane uh, rationalizations for each of these rankings. Speaking of Pittsburgh, one of the best teams in the NHL this season, seriously, like they are, they are, I guess well, I'll start with this, that they've got a rash of serious injuries. Crosby, Hornquist, Dumoulin, Schultz, Rust, Bugstad. Jack Johnson is technically injured right now, although if he was playing, I don't think you could notice a difference. 
<laughs> that said, so like the, the team is a, a disaster. That said, Malkin had a really good month in, in November, but they are banged up beyond words. Uh, but I feel like when that team is healthy, those pieces are really, really good. Maybe maybe Matt Murray is below the, the tier there or since, since his, his cup win. But like they're an excellent team. And I feel like it'll be January or Christmas um, before we see the team that they're supposed to be, the team that they you know assembled. Um, and once that happens, I think, you know, look out uh, for them. But for now, they're garbage, and uh, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. I'm amazed that there are four Metropolitan teams in D&E. Because yeah. I remember in the beginning of the season, all of those teams could have been up there. Yeah, I wrote, I, wrote a, I wrote a piece being like, the Metro just got a little lot tougher, and then look at this. Right? Yeah, you know? no. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's see who we've got next. In yeah, it's Tampa. So we're on the C tier. And there's last year's President's Trophy winners, one of the most dominant teams of the regular season of the last 15 years. Tampa Bay is right now outside of a, a playoff spot, which is nuts. They are 13-9-3 and three as of, what, Thursday night. Uh, I, I, I think they're still sort of taking their time a bit, but like I feel like the seat underneath John Cooper is getting hotter and hotter. Uh, I'm still just sort of like baffled by why Tampa is not – doing that great i think it may have to do with competition in their division which is something we'll talk about in a little bit but i wouldn't be super happy with the the performance that we've seen them so far yeah um you know when they played the caps recently they looked they looked every bit as good as they've been in the past they just weren't scoring they weren't putting it together it looked like they were a step off like or a second off um but you know they're still one of the best teams in the league and you know, maybe they just haven't been the same since Tom Wilson punched Eric Chernak's uh, tooth out of his out of his mouth. You know, that can really have an impact on a team. I'm so. glad, like, you know pronunciations that I don't have. Because, like, Chernak, I mean, I get it, like, intellectually yeah. how you say it. But, like, I, I would have gone, like, Cernak. Like, I would have been I wrong. mean, I still struggle with Chelyabinsk. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's hard. Uh, that's hard. That's a hard one. Um. Okay, so I want to, this one is important, right? Because we're about to jump from Tampa to the next team. And I don't want it to be, like... This team is better than the previous team. These are both C tier teams, and they're there for different reasons. Buffalo is on the same tier as Tampa. That said, if those two teams played each other tonight, I would pick Tampa for sure. But uh, Buffalo had such a hot start to the season. Jack Eichel's been pretty damn solid. Um, they were, uh, you know, just excellent PDO that they've banked up a lot of points. Um, that said, uh, Rasmus Dahlin and uh, Kyle Posa both have concussions right now. And I think the PDO magic fairy dust is wearing off, and I think they're going to come back to reality, and we'll see them settle probably on the D or E tiers before you know the season's up. That said, it's fun to see Buffalo not be totally miserable for for a minute, you know. Yeah, they're playing a C level, but those gold jerseys they made are S quality. Oh, okay, big yeah, big big that's, praise. That's my, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, those are amazing. Those um, are amazing. I want to just buy one to have it and put it on my wall. This, uh, this next one, I think, is one of the biggest surprises of the season so far. Um, so the Philadelphia Flyers are on a win streak. I think they've won five games in a row. I think it's – I mean, they're they're relatively hot. They've only lost one game at home the whole season. They've got a healthy lineup. Um, everything during 5-on-5 five five is better than average. Um, their PDO is flat. They're at, like, you know, one. So, like, you know, the, the sum of their shooting percentage and their saving percentage during even strength is, is 100, which is fine. I would at this point classify them as like a, a dark horse. I think they're, unless stuff changes, I think they're, they can have a, a strong chance of making the playoffs uh, and a, an outside chance of actually making any noise once they're in there. But it's, you know, good to see a team that has had, I, mean, I know we're supposed to hate them and I guess I sort of do, but it's good to see them sort of like claw their way back to a level of respectability after a while. Yeah, I'm really impressed by Carter Hart. I think he's a, he's really turning into a pretty good goalie. Um, but yeah, but, the Flyers are still middling beyond their beyond their uh, mascot game, which is very solid. Uh, you know, they still have a lot to catch up on on I, the ice. I think you're absolutely right about Carter Hart. Like, I think that's the story. Like, yeah. uh, you know, like he when he came up, he was like the only thing to get psyched about. If you were a Flyers fan last season when that team was getting you know caved in night overnight and he did some really good stuff in the spring. Uh, I'm really excited to see if he can do more of that. Uh, going forward and if he can be you know the, the franchise goalie i is he gonna pay play 65 games for them we'll see um actually speaking of of goalies who are not good at 65 games we've got the uh, uh montreal Canadiens who have been getting some rough performances out of carry price lately 
Uh, I think that they're a darn good team. Like, I think a lot of the stuff that made them a good team last season is still true now. Uh, they've got good, you know, bones. But, um, you know, Carey Price has blown games for them. Like, they, they've had some spotty defenses, like, here and there. There was a game, like, last week where, you know, uh, Price got fully lit up. But what, what happens when you've got a goalie that you're paying $10 million a year and he's supposed to play 65 games a season and he's blowing those games for you? Like, that's a... There's a serious situation in in Montreal, and I don't know what you can do to get out of it. Peter, that sounds like future deja vu if the Capitals sign Braden Holtby. They're not going to. Uh, they even if they wanted to, they 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 won't. You know what I mean? Like, but but well, that's another that's a topic for another day, Ian. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, so let's get let's get out of uh, uh, French Canada and down to Carolina. Where these, Those jerks. I love these jerks uh, still. The second best expected goals team in the league. Um, they are not having great PDO so far this season. So, like, their shooting and saving is not that hot. I'm not super worried about their goalies necessarily. I think it's just, um, you know, small sample stuff. I feel like what we're going to see, especially, like, when you get into the uh, uh, January, February, March, is that Carolina is going to look just as fearsome as they did last season. I don't see any reasons not to. I wonder if they bring back Justin Williams. I still think that's an interesting open question. You know, like, to, you know, will a guy like that take the fall off, stay in condition, and then, you know, come back on a cheap deal? Um, I think we're seeing breakout seasons from Smechnikov. I think that, like, you know, they have some really special players in that team, and they're not s- significantly different from last season. I think they're, you know, a little less dominant during 5-on-5, five five, and I think that sort of makes sense with some of the changes in the middle six. But, yeah, uh, a, a damn good hockey team. Uh, and I would be afraid of them if the Caps weren't at S-tier, by the way. Spoiler alert, the Caps are S-tier. Yeah, I, I, but I hope I see Justin Williams come back. I think that would be really interesting to see how much they, uh, he improves them. And, uh, yeah, the most interesting part for them uh, lately has been uh, all the coaching stuff that's come out with them. And, man, what a mess. And that, like, I, I totally – so, like, Justin Williams – I think reportedly sort of ducked the media about that. Like, he's like, I don't want to talk about that crap, you know, like to, to comment on what Bill Peters was like when he was a coach down there, um, which, you know, sort of bookended his time, you know, on the other stretches. But yeah, uh, that is going to be with the team for a while, especially as there's sort of like ongoing disputes about who knew what, when, and if anything was done about it. And, uh, I don't think we've heard anywhere near the end of that story. Um, uh, John Tortorella, uh, you know, have some more pepto because it's going to come for you, too, I bet. All right, let's move on to the A-tier and its sole occupant, the New York Hockey Islanders and Barry Trotz's boys. So this isn't, I mean, listen, I'm just going to do it one more time. They're shooting 8.5, which is good. It's, you know, top half of the league. They're saving 94%. So just how? So, uh, so Thomas Grice, I think that's how you say it, and Semyon Varlamov are both saving 94 percent they're splitting their games they're they're basically like doing a 50 50 split which is pretty nuts but they've got the second best goaltending in the league um they're they've got a bad power play but a really good penalty kill which sort of like lines up with what you see there they allow and this basically just sounds like the 2018 caps to me in a lot of ways except for the part where they win the cup because they're not going to do that um they allow 60 uh, percent shot attempts per hour meaning the opponents take 60 shot attempts against the islanders in an hour of five on five play but the Islanders only generate 51. So that they're like deep in the hole uh, in like controlling play. And then if you like adjust that for shot quality, like you can expect their opponents to generate 2.4 goals in an hour of hockey and the Islanders would generate 2.1. So th- they're doing slightly better in like the ratio if you like factor in quality as best we can understand it, but they're still a pretty iffy team. Uh, um, I guess uh, I, here's where I just sort of prompt you to talk about goalie magic because that's the only thing I can think of. You know, yeah, it's it's it always comes back to Mitch Korn, who should be in the Hockey Hall of Fame at some point as a. Uh, I think it would be a builder, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it's yeah. One of those things, right? I, I think I think I think uh, every year the goalies that he coaches are always good. It's absolutely insane, and um, you know. Look what he did for Holtby. Look what he did for um, Nashville. Look what he did for Hashik. I mean, look what he's doing to two guys who, you know, I think Grice can be a good player um, and a good goalie at times, but, like, he's not he's not this good. Barley is not this good in Late, his career. And last year, Robin Lehner wasn't either. Like, I, I'm, yeah, it's I'm crazy. baffled. Like, it's weird because I'm, I'm, 
I mean, I'm explicitly rooting against them, right? Like, I want to see them fail. But at the same time, I love Mitch Korn. I like Barry Trotz a whole bunch. Um, Lane Lambert's going to be going to leave. Lane Lambert's going to leave that team, especially as, like, more coaches get fired around the league. Like, Lane Lambert is in demand. So, like, yeah. I, I'm rooting for all those guys. Barry Trotz somewhat less than the other two. But, like, I, I like all of them, and I hope they do well, except I also hope their team crashes to the ground. I also I owe Isabella another shiny nickel. If they make, if they're like a good team again, so I'm screwed. Well, I um, I also think part of it is is that the system they play makes it a little bit more predictable for the goalies, and I think that's also part of it is like they 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 have kind of like a funnel approach to how they defend, and I think uh, that's also a part of it. Um, so it, it's just interesting how they play and how, you know, I I didn't think Barry would find the magic with the Islanders so fast, obviously, yeah. and. It's unbelievable how how well they're playing consistently. I mean, unfortunately, I have to give him credit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All but right. at least he's not scratching Jacob Verona up there. So true. Um, then let's uh, let's get up to the S tier. Uh, and here's a scary S team, the Boston Bruins. Ugh. Um, I think they're uh, a, a near perfect hockey team. Uh, if you were to put them um, first in the league, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. Um, so like right now. David Pasternak is a shoe and odds on favor favorite to win the heart and probably the, the rocket Richard as well. Um, that said right now he's shooting like 69% uh, or it's like 22%, but he's shooting a crazy percent. Like his shooting percentage is, is buck wild. I, I like how you use 69%. That I can't, was nice. I can't help it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so like he's been amazing. He won't stay that amazing, but he, I mean, he's playing, Basically, like the rate at which he's scoring right now is as good as anybody's done in the last twenty years. Like it's it's off the charts. It's like OV sixty five goal season numbers right now. So that's um, that's nuts. But they but like it's not just him. I mean, they, they've got a good power play at which he's a big role player. He's essentially the OV spot guy there. Um, good good depth. Uh, Char is still viable at age seventy five or whatever he is. <laughs> the they've got one of the best like defenses in the league team defense i mean like you know it's it's bergeron's team so like everyone's involved in defense um and they are shooting a bit hot pastor next the biggest driver of that so they're only like the only team that's shooting hotter than boston right now is the colorado avalanche who we won't talk about because they're at the west but you know colorado's liquid nitrogen wait well, no the opposite of that they're molten lava hot um and they're when you put it all together with some good goaltending uh, they're the second highest PDO team in the whole NHL. So uh, look out for Boston. That said, the Caps beat them. And I think, you know, beat them soundly. So I don't care. Any thoughts on Boston before we move on to the team that everyone knows was going to be the, the last one? It's, it, it always comes back to Brad Marchand. I hate that guy. I just, <laughs> I just wish I wish I wish I could play hockey against him once so I could just face wash him. But isn't it a great story? Uh... Though? Like, but like, so like he was, I don't know, like um, I try to like he was like Joel Recklish. Is that how you say his name? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. That's close. Yeah, he was like he was like a third line, fourth line past. He didn't play with like a wooden stick. He wasn't that much of like a throwback. But like <laughs> he he was like that kind of player for his first. And then he hit whatever age, and then he just jumped he to another gear. And now he's one of the best hockey players in the world, and he still is just as much of an arrogant jick dick. I yeah, I just can't. I, like I, when he was picking on one of the Capitals, maybe it was Kempney, and then Tom Wilson came over and he just like turtled. Oh, I just can't. I can't stand it, man. I That's just, a good I, gift, though. I just can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm happy. You know, Pasternak is an amazing player, though. It, it, as you said, I mean, he he is playing at a level that is really impressive for a guy. You know, you expect this from like a Nathan McKinnon yeah. or 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 Sidney Crosby. You don't expect this from a David Pasternak. Uh, so it, it's really cool how they've kind of started to develop their own younger superstars. Uh, as their aging ones have kind of uh, are, are starting to fall off the map a little bit at some point. I mean, Chara has to, to be sucky at some point. Ras too. But uh, yeah, it's really interesting how they were they got to the top of the map or the top of the charts like 10 years ago, and now they're back with with a lot of those same uh, younger players that they did well with then and a different group. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. And uh, I'm wondering if we might see that from the Capitals in like five, 10 years too. Oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well let's let's talk about the Capitals then. They're the yeah. they're the best team in the league right now. I mean, they're on like what, like a hundred and twenty something point pace. Hundred twenty eight uh, point pace. They've got they have to cool off. 
that said, like they were, they're not dealing with crazy PDO numbers. I mean, what we've seen is like the shooting percentage is like up and down. So like the Caps had a rough run, you know, and by rough run, I mean they went 500 for a week. Uh, but and, and the back half of December, by the way, really tough schedule. So like there are, you know, they're playing Tampa twice this month. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna get rougher. It's not gonna be this nice, but right now it is really nice. I, I think the big difference with them is just how easily they're scoring at five on five. If anyone wanted to go after John Carlson and say that he isn't a good year, um, they would go like, "Well, he's getting all his points on the power play, right. passing to Ovi." Most of his points this year have come on five on five. So you have Carlson effortlessly, you know, almost leading the league in points, which is something the Capitals have never gotten from him before you're getting secondary scoring from the bottom six you're getting pretty good defense from the bottom uh, from the defense uh radko gudis is having a great year um and then you have ovi doing the same things he always does i mean they're winning without backstrom yeah. i i think they've won uh what is it i think they're four or five one and two with backstrom that is just absolutely nuts uh th this is the deepest team they've ever had and uh you know, and Verona's a superstar, but he's not even getting a ton of opportunity still. Hardly any power um, play time. You know, I think this is when, when people criticized Barry Trotz when he was here and wondered what a Todd Reardon Capitals team would look like. This is it, where they're really aggressive on D. Um, and I think he makes really good lines uh, and, and really good combos. And uh, I just think the team is just – I don't think the team is going to fall off. I, you know, I just worry if they're going to be ready to play playoff hockey like – you know, there's always a transition for that, but I just think they're going to run roughshod on the league because I, I don't know. I just you, you expect Carlson to fall off. Like I feel like oh, he's yeah, kind he's of the guy it. that's yeah. You, you you feel like he's the guy that's putting them maybe score. You know, like they're having so many blowouts. Like you feel like his production is kind of part of the reason why they're having that. And I mean, it just you know, even if he falls back to his normal pace, I mean, they're just still going to be romping people. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. The so like. Other things you mentioned, I think most of the big points, but the stuff I'll add is that they haven't had great goaltending. Um, and I think we've seen like sort of, you know, Hope had a, a bunch of stumbles, one really, really terrible game, and he sort of clawed his way back up to respectability. He's, you know, flirted with a couple of uh, uh, shutouts, and I think he'll get there eventually, especially when the Caps are limiting shots like they've done pretty well lately. Um, heck, it could happen on, on Friday against uh, Anaheim. Um, the, the fourth line as it's like currently constructed with Leipzig, Hathaway, and Dowd is about a, as good of a fourth line as the Caps have had maybe since like the Winnick, Wilson, Beagle um, stuff in like, what was that, like 2017? Like yeah. that, that was like a dominant fourth line. Like those guys have played a good chunk of time together. I think they're controlling like 65%. I mean, that's basically a two to one ratio of offense to defense. That's buck wild. Um, Jacob Rana gets no power play time, but is shooting and scoring at a rate that's elite among all NHL forwards. Um, so like if there were a way to give him a promotion, you would, but there's no way to bump Ovi off where he is and Ovi's doing his thing as well. So like, um, yeah, I think they're a great team. I, th I think maybe, maybe we'll look back at this team in a few months and we'll say, was this team as good as like the 16, 17 team? And it, like, it's possible that they are. And then the question becomes, can Todd Reardon take them farther than Barry Trotz did that year? And I, I think it absolutely could happen. Um, you know, like all credit to Brian McClellan. I mean, they made a, a pretty tough decision with Chandler Stevenson. Um, you know, like that's a, a player that everyone liked uh, on the team. And, you know, he's had some bright spots. He's had a, an up season. Like he's in, he's training the right trajectory. He just started low enough that it's like, you know, a, a tough situation. And they made the tough, but probably wisest decision to move him to Vegas. Uh, and, you God bless Chandler Stevenson. He's doing fine out there already. And, you know, the fourth line's, you know, free to, to kick ass. Lars Eller's having a very quiet season, but it's been very, very solid. Jonas Siegenthaler, really? Jonas Siegenthaler is not getting, you know, he's hardly playing. Like, uh, he's not playing big minutes. Man, he's crushing them. Yeah, uh, like the, the player that everyone is sort of, like, trashing is Nick Jensen, and that's just, you know, PDO, like, bad, like, shooting and saving percentages. Like he's a he's like a player he's the biggest misfit on the team because he's the defense first very low offense guy, um, and he's been excellent at it. I, I, dropping in Gudis and it's like, you know, yeah, we're dropping in Rakko Gudis and it's just like uh, a perfect fit. Like there was just no adjustment period. I listened to like the the podcast with uh, um, Dowd and Hathaway and uh, Gudis on there, and there was they were like they acted like they knew each other their whole lives. It, I 
this is a great this is a great team and I, i'm really excited for them uh i think they're gonna face some adversity i mean they've already faced some adversity with injuries but um yeah. i feel like they're gonna have a rougher time uh, especially as we head into the new year they're gonna get pretty tired they've had a pretty rough schedule throughout the year so you know it's not gonna stay this nice forever but it's been pretty damn good so far you know i and just to add on to that is that I think they have about five or six guys in the AHL that are NHL players. Yeah. I think uh, when I went up on Sunday, uh, Martin Ferravari is just, I mean, that guy is a top four. He did great, and, stuff, and he only played with like, a, he, right now. Only a handful of games up in the NHL. He played but three games. Yeah. yeah. No, I, but when you looked at him in the AHL, he did everything right. I mean, he looked dominant. I, he's... I, when when I look back at all my years of going to Hershey games, like kind of evaluating who's who's fitting in, who's not, I mean that guy just looked like he didn't belong there at all. It, it's insane. Right. Um, but you have like Phoenix Copley, who, you know, I think he could be a second goalie on most NHL teams, but Samsonov pushed him down. Uh, you know, we've had disagreements about like Liam O'Brien. Beck Malenstein looked amazing when he was up here. So they have this like really, really, really deep depth too of guys that are playing the kind of the same system. You look at Christian Jews in Hershey. I mean, that guy is an NHL defenseman. You cannot argue with me in that. I mean, you might not want him on, you know, I've heard a lot of things about how like maybe he gets pushed around in the playoffs uh, because he's undersized, sure, but he's still a good NHL defenseman and he's in Hershey. Um, you have Alexiev who, who, who just did not look like he fit there. So yeah. there's just, they are so unbelievably deep at honestly almost every position, maybe minus uh, top end forward. But if you think about it, Tom Wilson could fill in. Um, Verona could do more. You have so many guys in the bottom lines that could do more. Eller hasn't missed Hath a step when he went to top Gar six. Garnet Hathaway. I mean, that guy has just fit in unbelievably well, minus that one incident that really bugged me out and not a lot of other people. But Yeah, I didn't care. Uh, <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's, it's just – they are crazy deep, and uh, there's a lot of guys that could be doing more. And Richard that's what Ponick. I think. Yeah, I mean, you could just look if you look at this team five years from now with some of the stars they have that are kind of younger now. It's just like, man, Tom Wilson's going to score 30, 40 goals one year. I mean, it's just like Verona is too. It's just crazy. Uh, Verona is going to score 30 this year. Yeah, take, it's take just to the crazy. Bank. Uh, Tom it's Wilson crazy. might also. We'll see. It, it depends on those opportunities. Um, that, I think, gets us through our our, our tier list so uh, do rip me to shreds in the comments below uh and uh thank you for following along we'll have a lot for more you uh soon enough bye guys oh boy